Hi, my name is Maxine Hoover with the Barrel Consulting Group. We are here today with Dan Sandberg from S&P Global. So Dan, you've said elsewhere that the competitive advantage is less about the model and more about how you use it. Can you unpack that a bit for us? Sure. Um, from my perspective, the models are convergent. We're seeing a lot of these models trained on similar data, using similar model protocols, similar training, uh, and so on. And so the differentiation is less about the model you're choosing and more about how you're actually using it. Concretely, I, I think market participants have three opportunities to develop a competitive advantage. The first would be avoiding mistakes. It's very easy to do AI-driven analysis wrong. And so that means that you need to bring in auditable, grounded data to justify the generative and stochastic elements that are coming out of the AI model. Um, another way to avoid mistakes is to make your pipeline more deterministic by anchoring on things like the embeddings or feature extraction rather than having the AI generate uh, new text, if you will. The other thing I would say, the second thing would be uh, making sure that you're providing the model with the right context. And so we uh, started, when we uh, started to see AI become more popular, the RAG implementation or retrieval augmented generation was very popular. We're now starting to see that replaced with model context protocols, MCP where the AI doesn't have to be fed information, it can actually go out and retrieve that information. That means that we have to somehow transfer knowledge from the human to the AI, and that knowledge transfer needs to be both generalized information and also company-specific information. And then finally, uh, the third advantage would be to perform the thematic and fundamental analysis that quants have always wanted to perform, but couldn't quite figure out how to standardize or create factors for. That sort of thematic analysis at scale becomes very powerful. Um, and so it's less about the model coefficients of the AI and more about the workflow, the data, and the discipline that you wrap around it. It's incredible. So fast forward into the future. Where are we heading? What does the future have in store for financial markets? I think there's two answers to that question. The long term is a bit of a mystery, but um, as a quant, I like to sometimes create a, a toy model to see if I can come up with an answer. And, and in this case, if we create some simplifying assumptions, if we assume that the world is going to eventually develop an, an all-powerful AI that can perfectly process all the information that's available, everything, all the, all the information behind a paywall, all the information coming from S&P Global, all the information coming from our peers. If it can do all of that, then we no longer have a difference of opinion. We no longer have a need to compete. The AI is effectively uh, generating uh, perfect information or perfect insights from the information that's av available. And so where does that go? Where does that lead us? Um, perhaps the AI sets a cost of capital for companies, for those that are consuming uh, uh, capital to run the operations of their business, whether it's equity or whether it's debt, uh, they would come to the market and the AI would tell them what the required rate of return would be given their risk. And for the investor that's contributing funds into this pool of assets, they would get a fixed rate of return based on their time horizon, their liquidity needs, their tax constraints, and so on. And so um, that long-term vision probably has me out of a job as well as most of the other people here. Fortunately, we're not there, right? Um, and I think we still have quite some time before we get there. So what did the next turn of this look like? probably the humans and the AI are working together. And so that's where the uh, three differentiators I spoke to earlier, avoiding mistakes, giving the right context, and being able to scale insights really becomes what makes the economic moat and the competitive advantage. Wow, that's really, uh, it's fascinating to hear all of this from you. I mean, what a crazy world we're about to uh, 
we're about to enter into. It's a fast moving space. Excited to see where it goes. Yeah. Incredibly exciting. Well, thank you so much, Dan. And thank you for tuning in to Barrel Elites.